three. Hey guys, Tim here again. Holly behind the camera, as always for this series. And um, I, for this one, we're gonna go over a couple things about the turns and a couple things about adding rooms. Um, so as far as the turns are concerned, um, uh, basically, one of the things that we did um, was mana generation. At first, we decided to be just like Ma Magic the Gathering where you'd get mana cards and you'd tap them and stuff like that. Um, however, it seemed at certain times that that was a little bit cumbersome. Um, and I was looking for something that might be a little more clean. So what we decided to do was make it that you would get mana for every creature you had on the board, plus your twin. Uh, twins. Um, so, for example, if I was this purple army and the blue army, then clearly the blue army is getting four per turn and the purple army is getting three. Um, we're not positive about this rule yet. It seems kind of fun um, because it's really simple. Uh, mana carries over from turn to turn, but we have a cap on it so that you can't go crazy. Um, and it obviously encourages you to cast lower level creatures just to get more pieces on the board so you can get more mana. Um, and encourages you to kill the other creatures and not just go after the kings because that will hurt their mana. It definitely does have a kind of rich get richer kind of slant to it, but we think that's okay because in theory you'd be playing multiple games and it's that much cooler when you have that last finishing move um, when you're really being kind of attacked and you're kind of screwed. Um, actually, that's one of the things um, that uh, our friend Aubrey likes about the game is, is that Unlike in chess, when you're in the end game and it seems like doom is inevitable, at least in this, because you have all the spells and stuff like that, you can kind of get out of situations and have a last ditch attack. Um, not that you can't in chess, but it's just less likely. Um, another thing um, that we just, we played around with was moving all of your creatures at once, um, which gives it kind of that XCOM slash. Um, you know, kind of game where you have so many turns that you can move, it kind of gives it a, that tactical feel to it of moving each army piece. Uh, but the problem was is that that gets rid of a lot of the cool chess strategy. Um, like things like, oh, I move him here so that I'm attacking both of these guys, but if they can both move, then there's no forks and skewers anymore and cool stuff like that. Another thing is, is that it actually requires a lot it actually requires turns to take a little bit longer, not only because you have to move everybody, but because you have to think through like how every move will affect everything. And it just kind of starts to jumble up in your head. Um, finally, one of the last things that we have in here, and it, it's, it's a little bit confusing, but makes sense, but maybe we can iron it out a little bit, um, is that in the turn order, it's kind of like magic where you have these phases, and the reason things happen in that order is, number one, so that it can be nice and simple, like spawn creatures, move creatures, uh, cast spells. Uh, another reason that we do it that way, and actually that is the order, is, is that you, you spawn your creatures, uh, then you can move one, and then you cast your spells on them, is, is that it would be really unfair if, for example, um, this piece, um, which is actually positioned fine, as it is here, um, if all of a sudden we had that movement and spell casting in arbitrary order, and you see how it is not attacking any either of the twins right now, it's a bishop, so it moves diagonally along the white, but then all of a sudden if you cast ricochet on it, and then you performed your move, you'd win the game. And it seems that seems cheap, because it just doesn't seem like you'd be able to predict that kind of stuff. You wouldn't be able, it, there'd just have to be all these quick kind of kills that wouldn't be fun. So we make it so that you have to spawn your creatures, then you move your creatures, then you cast spells. So the idea is, is that you're modifying them, and the other player has at least one turn to be like, oh crap, what am I going to do about this, to kind of react. Um, so that's kind of like some of the turn order things that we do to kind of make the game work well. Um, then, um, oh, multiple rooms. So let me show you real quick. So we started off and we played it this way. Oh, and, and also just for the heck of it, um, Another thing that I thought would be really fun is if there were more than two players. Um, so we made it so that there are four players. Right now we don't have a fourth color because uh, we haven't spray painted them yet. But we have played, I have played at least a three player game. And it can be really fun because it's kind of that 
Mexican standoff thing where you're trying to keep your eye on one and keep your eye on the other, and it's like if you attack too much on this guy, then you're leaving your def you're, you're exposing yourself. Um, but it started getting crowded, which is fun. Um, but I was like, what if? And maybe I've played too many dungeon crawlers. But I was like, what if the boards could be more interesting? Um, and this is here's another board piece, uh, and you can see that maybe we could do something. Um, this is a bad example, but if we do that, maybe. Um, bam. This is a bad example because the numbers are running down on this. Um, let me see if I can find a better example. Yeah, here. So something like this. Where all of a sudden, imagine if one of you starts in this room, and the other one starts in this room. Um, you got your guys here, and they got their guys here. And so, you know, there are pinch points that can happen where, like, a rook, a, like, for example, in this layout, bishops are incredibly powerful because they can, you know, shoot right through the room. Whereas, like, a rook has to make a move up here and then make a move over here. Um, so it, it adds some really interesting wrinkles. And what I also would do is I would make boards like this where there are, um, I don't have it set up right now, but basically, like, maybe there'd be dead areas in there so that you could only pass through corridors and stuff like that. And it creates these interesting pinch points. Another thing that's kind of interesting that it does, um, and this is a rule that we're playing around with right now, um, is if this, if you could only cast, if you could only spawn creatures or cast creatures or summon creatures, whatever you want to say, in a room, this is a room, uh, that you have creatures in. So right now, I can't just start spawning creatures over there. I um, mean, that's really cool because it makes it so that you gotta push this scout out here and now all of a sudden, you can start spawning creatures in their room and, and if the other person doesn't get someone in their room, they're gonna be on the defensive the whole time. Um, so it can make it kind of interesting. We've also played, we've also tried playing a single player version of this. Um, of course, we've done it it would be single player if it was like a video game, but we've done it with, you know, one of us plays the Dungeon Master, essentially. And all we do is we set it up so that there are multiple rooms. The bad guy gets lots of enemies, but doesn't get any spells to cast, so they don't grow at all. And the good guy, or the whatever, get, plays it normally, so they start with no one. And then they slowly, you know, cast and summon creatures. And it creates this really fun kind of oh my god, I gotta be on defense right now because I'm gonna get killed, and then as you grow, then you go back on offense and you try and kill the other twins. Um, yeah, so I mean, those, these are kind of some variations that we've thrown on top of it. We're not trying to overcomplicate it or anything like that, um, but we're kind of playing around with it. Um, and so I think at this point, um, we might you know, take a week or two and try and do some crazy rapid prototype of this as a, as a video game. Um, just, you know, very basic. Just to see if it was fun, and maybe we could put that out so that people could play it. Um, but yeah, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now that I haven't covered. Um, I could actually put out the rules so that people could play it. Um, but hopefully maybe if we do the prototype, then I'll take care of that. Um, but yeah, so I guess thanks for watching and stuff. And this is sort of how we came up with an idea for a game that we oddly call Chess the Gathering right now. <laughs>